Hello everybody, I'm back here. <laughs> I'm talking about um, multiple sclerosis and inappropriate sinus tarchiata, which is a heart rhythm problem. And um, if I, I, I got real dizzy and had balance problems, like I couldn't stand it very long and my heart was racing, so I bought pulse meters. And I put them on when I was walking or standing up and I noticed the numbers was higher than 100. Without the beta blocker, it would definitely be 180, 190, 200. And that's not good for your heart. They want your heart rate, their pulse rate, to be 60 to 100. Unless you're running, exercising, and doing strenuous activity, it's going to be higher. But it goes back down after your rest. With this, it, just, it was staying high and wouldn't go down. I had to lay down for it to go down. So I couldn't be active. So if it wasn't for me, my cardiologist says, how did you notice this? I said, well, I have pulse ox meters. I have different ones, different because there's different kinds. They got some, the red light inside stays steady, and there's some that flash fast. The ones that flash fast picks up your pulse rate quicker, okay? The ones that are steady light in there where your finger goes, it's like delayed, okay? So if you use the hospital or the ambulance, you'll see it's like the red light that stays on, and there's some that flicker. The ones that flicker can catch they can, they can catch the, the, the tarchiata episode where it bounces up and down real fast. You feel it, your heart. I woke up out of bed one time, my heart was pounding. It was like boom, 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 like 300 miles an hour. And I walked outside, I'm like, man, it's getting harder. It's getting, my chest is like, my heart's ready to blow out of my chest, so I called 911. The 911 dispatch was convincing me that I had COVID. I was like, look, I have heart condition, it's not COVID. I got tested for COVID multiple times. They come to my house. They put a thing up my nose and just twirled around for a while. Came back two days later, negative. I had about a dozen of them done in the past year. <laughs> okay, I had one done about a month ago. They're going to have another one done this week. They come to my house and do it. I don't get out of the house. Uh, you know, I have an autoimmune disorder. A lot of people are not taking this COVID-19 very seriously, especially younger generation. You know, even the older, I got a couple older guys. He said, he delivered packages to hospitals and they yell for not wearing a mask. He said, I don't need to wear a mask because I'm, I, uh, I'm not sick. So he says, only people in nursing homes get COVID-19. Old people who already are sick get COVID. So I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, whatever, dude, you know. <laughs> it's crazy, but yeah. So that's how I caught my inappropriate sinus tarchiata. I mean, I didn't know what I had to the cardiologist actually looked at EKGs, MRI of the heart, you know, echocardiogram tests. He seen me go in the hospital for a while. He had like 12 of them because I can compare the, the echograms to the other ones. You know what I mean? And echocardiogram uh, or EKGs. He compared them. See, when I went to the hospital with a fast heart rate, they did EKGs, but they said they didn't find anything at the hospitals. They said it was anxiety. So my cardiologist is the same network as a hospital. He, he can look at them through his computer system because they're like linked together. So he says he does see a difference. He says he sees a, a rhythm issue in there. But the hospital said they didn't. So that, that concerns me. Plus they said it was anxiety. I'm on a beta blocker. And um, yeah. And they say it's anxiety at the hospital like nine times or so. They got like they got me locked in on their, the tags in their computer system when I go in there it's anxiety and I don't get treated. All nine times I went in there, the high pulse rate and very high blood pressure did not get treated. They said it's all just anxiety. It will go down. One doctor came in. He's an older doctor. He goes, "Yeah, I know your, uh, you know your um, blood pressure is 220 over." you know, 155 or whatever, because I got people coming here with a lot more than that, and they don't get it treated. You take blood pressure medicine, you take beta blockers. I said, yeah, but I want that number to go down. He goes, nah, it's anxiety. You'll, it'll go down on its own. You know, we're not going to run any more tests. You've been, you've been in this hospital, like, it seems like every week, sometimes twice a week when you have a problem with your pulse being real high. So I walked in with all them problems and walked right back out with them. They were not treated. But one time, like a year ago, I was in there, or a couple years ago, my blood pressure was like borderline and they gave me a water pill. It's like crazy. It's crazy. So, yeah. 
So that's how it is nowadays. They're more focused on COVID-19. So they blew everybody off in the hospital. So they like blew them off. You know what I mean? It's crazy. So yeah. So, and I got multiple sclerosis on top of that. I think it's multiple sclerosis related because it's a dysfunction because your brain controls your, your central nervous system really controls your whole body. When it's got nerve damage, there's like a coating on your nerve called myelin sheath. MS, the immune system attacks that. So it's like a wire is being frayed. It's like driving your car and the lights are flickering. And you gotta go, okay, I'm gonna put new bulbs in them. You put brand new bulbs in them, they're still flickering. That's what people think. You just replace the problem. It's the wiring. <laughs> That's what's causing it. And there's no cure for multiple sclerosis. A lot of women get MS, but when men get it, they say it's more progressive. Okay? A lot of women get it, but when men get it, it's more progressive. Progressive. The most debilitating progressive disease is multiple sclerosis. And you never understand it, what it is, until you got it. It's one of them things, you don't get it till you got it. You know, like people say, oh, I know what it is. Muscular dystrophy, Jerry's kids. I'm like, no, it's not. They get it mixed up with Jerry kids. I'm like, what? Yeah. When I first got diagnosed, I had double vision. I was working third shift. Clean carpet at a Pizza Hut restaurant. It was like years ago, back in 2003. Started driving, my vision started going double. And I strained my eyes to get back to work to take the van back in one piece. So I told... My boss, what was going on? He said, "Okay, we'll pay. We'll pay you a couple weeks." So they paid me pay for two weeks. They gave me, you know, a couple thousand dollars for two weeks pay. So I made about a thousand dollars a week after taxes. So they paid me to find out what was going on. It took them six months to find out what I had. Six months. And I think I thank God for my job, just paying me the whole time, paying me thousand a week when I was out. And I had like five paid vacations. Vacation pay was like 2000 a week because I worked a lot of hours. I was commissioned then. I had a good job with benefits, so thank God I had a good job with benefits. I, th I thank the Lord for, for taking care of that money and everything. I thank God for giving me a good job. So, um, yeah, they, the last resort was like, went to the doctor. He goes, you still got double vision? I'm like, yeah, dude, it's still double. Because we're gonna do an MRI of the brain. Bingo, that's how they found it. They found lesions and scar tissues on my brain. Okay, back then I had two, now I got 50. <laughs> that's how progressive it is. And there's no pills, there's no cure. The medicine injections or pills they got now slow the progression down where it don't grow as, you know, gets debilitating as quickly. Okay, I had it since 2003, it's 2021, so yeah. So they did every test in the book. The last resort was do an MRI of the brain with and without contrast. The contrast actually shows active lesions. That's why they do contrast. They do two of them. It takes like an hour. 30 minutes for each one. It takes an hour. When they do one the brain, neck, and spine, it takes like three hours. You do six of them with contrast and without, without contrast first and with contrast. Six MRIs. They're like, yeah. Best best get them all done at one time. I'm going to be in that machine for at least three hours. Three hours in that machine. They put earplugs in your ears and the headphones on, but that machine's still loud. It's like bing, 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 bing. Let you listen to music and stuff. But yeah, my God. And I got to get one done here soon, like next month. Yeah, excuse me. I got to get six of them done next month. So, with multiple sclerosis, there's nobody alike. It's a snowflake disease. You can have 10 people lined up, and every single one will tell you they'll have different symptoms. But yeah, this heart rhythm problem is actually it's a dysfunction of MS because it controls your whole body. So, whatever controls your heart, it's a muscle. I even get muscle spasms or sugar muscle spasms. My muscles will like twitch in my arms, legs, knees above my ankles and it just rotates it comes and goes but there, some days are bad or worse than others when it's really bad you know what i mean they're like in the medicine the beta blocks i take does that too sometimes my head would probably will be like pounding pounding you know what i mean and all this oh it's anxiety i'm just, i'm just tired of hearing about it them doctors are just crazy it's anxiety 
So at the hospitals, they got me over here. I'm in Kentucky. They got me plastered under computer system anxiety. And I've been working on that for the past two months to get it out of there. I sent letters to them and they sent me a HIPAA form to fill out. I'm like, okay, these guys don't have no clue what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, because these doctors are not cardiologists. Even in the hospital, in, in, in the ambulance driver, in back of the ambulance, they seen the pulse go up and down real fast. They're like, you got anxiety or something? I said, no. And I walked, when I got in the hospital, nurse walks in and said, how much Mountain Dew you drink today? Three, two liters? I'm like, what? I don't drink pop. He said, your, your, your pulse is like all over the place. I've never seen anything like this. It's got to be anxiety. I mean, all this anxiety. So I had I got to get this anxiety crap out of there. If I go in there with very bad heart problems, they're going to say it's anxiety, and they're going to blow me off again, like they did for the past nine times. Blow me off. No treatment. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, so the hospital over here, they don't have a cardiologist there. They don't have a neurologist there. They can't really treat chronic illnesses. So if you go in there a flare-up, like multiple sclerosis, they, 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 they're like in the dark. They'll blow you off and blame it on something else just to get you out of that hospital. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were doing that to everybody during this COVID-19 pandemic. If it wasn't COVID-related, they blew you off and got you. I heard them say, we need to keep the emergency room empty. They had the COVID patients in another area. You know what I mean? I heard them say, we need to keep this emergency room empty. We want COVID patients. They had a little police scanner there, a fire scanner at the nurse's desk. You can hear it real loud. Every time they have somebody come in the hospital, they can hear somebody coming. Like, transporting one with 102 temperature. The guy's like, oh, 102 temperature. We got a COVID patient coming. They got a fever. You know, one had 104 temperature. We got another COVID patient coming. They got 104 temperature. They were tagging people with a temperature coming in the hospital as COVID. Apparently, if you had a fever, you have COVID. That's what the big thing was going on. You got a, COVID, you got a fever, you got COVID. Somebody's kid... At the, at the school had a fever and they said well she's got to stay home 12 days COVID-19 COVID quarantine because she had a fever and they're saying it's COVID-19 I'm like what I, I just don't get it I do not get it you know the fever and my, the ambulance driver told me she, she had COVID and did not have a fever she goes I don't know what this fever kick is I said when I go to my cardiologist they put a temperature thing up my head I had a hat on one time it was cold it was back in January she goes pull your hat up she pulled it down a little longer Cause my hat, my head was warm because the hat. I had a thermal hat on. She goes, okay, you're normal. They was going around doing temperature checks in the waiting room, and they had everybody spaced out like six, six to eight feet. They had to wear a mask. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? I wear a mask because people have COVID around here. Neighbors, you know what I mean? And they, they'll pop up on me, and the neighbors had had COVID or have it, have it. I don't know. I don't know if you if you get it and it goes away on its own, but. I have multiple sclerosis and autoimmune disorder. So if you get COVID, it's pretty much over with, over, over with. And that COVID-19 is not gonna go away any much longer. It's gonna be around for a while. They got different strains, strains of it. There'll be COVID-22, COVID-25, COVID-30, COVID-2045, COVID-2050, you know what I mean? COVID-2060 or COVID-60, you know what I mean? India's getting pounded right now. They're having a worse outbreak right now. It's like India right now. I'm like, unbelievable. It's like, oh my God. But yeah. So please like and subscribe. Much appreciated. Okay. For everybody out there with multiple sclerosis, please hit that like button and uh, comment and uh, hit that subscribe button. Much appreciated. Okay. I got like 290 subscribers and uh, I think I had this channel for over a year. So. Yeah, I appreciate all my subscribers though out there. I'm th thanks for the support and leave comments below if you're dealing with what I'm dealing with. A heart rhythm problem, get you a pulse meter, get you a couple of them, take AAA batteries, have you like 20 batteries on Amazon, buy your 40 batteries because they eat batteries up if you always have them on your finger. You know, like, like mine. I don't know if you can see it or not. No, oh, you can't see it. Look, <laughs> it's behaving today. I got 87 pulse, 97 oxygen. And sometimes it jumps to 50 when I'm walking or down to 40, then it just jumps up to 80. That's how tacky, they call it tacky, because it jumps like that. And this one has a light that flashes in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. See it flashing? See the light flashing? Hold on, it's off, hold on. This is what I got, the one that flashes. See it flashing? See it? 
and turn it back on. Let me turn it back on. I keep on turning it off because my finger is not in there. See it flashing? It's flashing. See it flashing? That's the kind you want. See it flashing? That's the kind of pulse meter you want. They make kinds that just has a steady red light on it. That delays your heart signal. This one picks up the Tarkiata episode. Okay, if you have an episode, the flashing one will, it's real fast. When you get real tacky, when your heart pulse rate jumps to 150, 160, 180, 200, 225, that picks up your, it's called an episode. That's what you, that's what you want, because then after it gets real high, and then your blood pressure starts going up, and you'll feel it. It feels like your body's burning, okay? I don't care what the media at the hospital say. It's anxiety, and it's not. You know what I mean? I walked in with a heart monitor. Cardiologist put me a heart monitor for 30 days, because the one they gave me for 24 hours didn't pick up anything. They gave me one for 30 days. It didn't pick up anything either. Well, guess what happened after I turned that in? A week later, I had an episode. <laughs> and when I go in the ambulance, they didn't rush me to the hospital. No lights, no sirens. So they couldn't record the episode. That's why my cardiologist got mad because they said it was anxiety. And he wants to date on that episode, okay? See what the rhythm's doing. When they're driving normal to the hospital, like this, no lights, no sirens, they're like, what? Yeah, I kept on explaining to my cardiologist. He's like, he's like blown away. I said, can they see your system? Can you see, can they see your computer what, when I see you, all the work, you know, all the notes? He said, yeah. I said, why when I go there, they had me down having sinus tarchiata. It's actually inappropriate. They have so many of them. Mine's called inappropriate because the racing heart just, just does it out of the blue. You know, I could be sitting down, laying down or whatever, and the heart goes bub, 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 real high. It's scary. I'm telling you, it's real scary because you don't know what's going to happen. Then when you go to the hospital, they, they delay you back there to get, you know, they don't even want to treat you. Oh, it's anxiety. I mean, I said, I'm tired of hearing this shit. You know what I mean? Or how much Mountain Dew or coffee you drink today. You know what I mean? We never seen a pulse rate jump like that up and down so fast in my life. Because you're not a cardiologist. You're just a doctor or a nurse. You have no clue what it is. They sent a nurse to my house. They sent a nurse to my house. And she had down on her computer system, I had anxiety. My insurance company called and said, why'd you have like nine trips to the hospital in three months for anxiety? I explained to them, it's not anxiety. So my doctor called and said, we're going to get an anxiety specialist over your house. I said, it's not anxiety. I mean, I, this whole anxiety crap got a whole bunch of garbage started. I had to tell people it's not anxiety. The nurse came to my house. She seen me wearing a heart monitor. And she had anxiety in her computer system because that's what the hospital had. The cardiologist would not put me on a heart monitor for anxiety. Okay, I wouldn't be on beta blockers or blood pressure medicine for anxiety. You know what I mean? Yep, it's a heart rhythm problem. There's AFib, sinus tarchiata, inappropriate sinus tarchiata, tarchiata. They got pot syndrome. They have so many out there. They're all somewhat related to each other, but they have different they have different symptoms. Okay, it's like having type one diabetes, type two, or stage four cancer, stage two cancer. Similar but different. Okay, they don't have cardiologists at the hospital. So they don't know what it is, so they just blow it off on something else. Just blame it on something else. You know what I mean? That is blaming on blaming on the rain, blaming on the, just blame everything for anxiety, because they don't know what it is. So if they put a fast pulse rate on there and blame it on anxiety, they're like, okay, it's anxiety causing it, but it's not. It's a dysfunction in multiple sclerosis. Okay, that's what it is. My cardiologist put it in my notes: dysfunction in MS. Told my neurologist that she said no it's not look i googled it on the internet it's all over the internet it is a dysfunction from ms Card cardiac dysfunction multiple sclerosis yes it is google it yep that's crazy but yeah i have to deal with it there's no way around it medication even the medication i take sometimes i still have episodes out of the blue out of the blue I, I deal with it at the house because I really don't want to call 911 because they blow you off. Say you have COVID-19 when you don't. You're on the phone with 911 operator for 10 minutes. They're convincing you you have COVID. Yeah, you know, they put they blame everything on COVID now. Well, yeah, an auto accident. He had COVID-19. Yep, he di died of dementia, but he had COVID-19. They put they label everything as COVID because I think they're getting a kickback of money somehow.
okay? That's why you go to the hospital nowadays. The hospitals are full, and they try to blow everybody off out of there, get them out of there. They blame everything on anxiety. Just get the hell, get the hell out of there. It's not COVID-19 related. It's all about that money. It's all about that money. I'm thinking they're getting a kickback. Just like that federal grant they got out. If you have a, per, a loved one that died of COVID-19, they pay for your funeral because they call it a, a natural disaster. They're calling this a disaster. The COVID-19 pandemic is like a natural disaster. Not no you know, no fault of anybody's of anybody. So the government's paying for the um, the funeral. So you guys have a good Mother's Day. Tomorrow's Mother's Day, and I won't be filming tomorrow. It's gonna be raining all day. It's gonna be cold. It's gonna be 40 degrees tonight. Maybe 39. Cold rain. 24-hour rain. It's going to be a soaker on Mother's Day tomorrow, they said. Crazy. But you guys have a lovely weekend. Please like and subscribe and comment down below, okay? Thank you.